Uh, my name is Marty Robertson. I'm a Hawaiian citizen. We're out here at the Banfield about the 69 mark. Uh, we're digging test holes for the new improvement, safety improvement for the Banfield main. We're just doing soil analysis and uh, checking for plant life. Biologists are just doing a sweep right now just to check and see what we got. We're going to be working our way from Banfield all the way into Port Alberni. I don't know what the stand is, but this archaeology group. So can not take you? No, you can, but it's just CMTs within this area. I'm here monitoring the soil. When they dig it up, I'm just scoping out the soil, make sure there's no artifacts in the, in the soil they're digging up. And from there, if there's anything, it's got to stop work. And Well, within here would be bones. I don't know about shell, but... What we had found in the past is this more rock tools. Yeah, there's CMTs in this area, like there's bark strips, there's stumps back here. There's archaeology features in this a general area here because of the falls are just right nearby. And We're looking at a big cedar stump. Got nurse trees on top. This is probably about, I'm gonna say about over 1500 years old just by guessing. It's an old tree, old growth. They're looking for species, frogs, invasive well, plants, some protected plants, non-protected plants. And... We're standing beside a wetland uh, right now um, because LGL's role in this uh, on the Banfield Main project is to collect the baseline environmental conditions along the road to give us some idea of the current conditions of aquatic and terrestrial resources. So that means fish and fish habitat and the terrestrial resources, so ecosystems and um, the wildlife and vegetation that occur in the area. So we're collecting data to show what uh, the current conditions are and what exists along the road and um, what, where the sensitive areas might be and what, how that overlaps with any road con construction that might go on. And then we're going to develop a environmental management plan uh, that provides sort of mitigation measures on how to reduce any sort of impacts on the resources that occur. And um, this is one of the small wetlands that occurs along the road. So um, there's a variety of different fish and wildlife that occur on in this area. This area right alongside the road is actually peppered with, there's about 15 to 20 northwestern salamander egg masses. So I can show you one. So pond breeding amphibian species will lay in shallow areas typically like this. Um, and they often will attach their egg masses to some of the emergent vegetation that's coming out. And northwestern salamanders typically lay an egg mass. It's about the size of a grapefruit, 250 um, larvae, so salamander larvae and it's a relatively hard structure. And so the larvae will develop in there uh, and then emerge and feed for, you know, a month to two months in the, uh, in the water. And so it's an area such as this where we would identify it as a sensitive area, one of them along the road, just because of the species that occur and that are using this area. And so when construction does occur, um, it'll be something where we'll provide measures to, to make sure that sediment or other road materials aren't introduced into the system. You. Um, slugs are, there's just quite a few invasive ones. Look at this. Millipedes, all wrapped up with one another. So no frogs, that's good. One salamander moved. And nothing else much going on here. Standard out where in the public side, not as standard out of the public side, if you know what I mean. Like out in logging roads and stuff like that, a lot of times it doesn't get done. Um, so I'm glad that it is being the environmental monitoring portion of the road construction that's happening because there are lots of species that get affected so, and pushed out. Yeah, all the way to Port Alberni. There's 50 points, I believe along that they're going to do the test pits and then I think she said like a couple times a month there'll be other 
different ones that will be joining to do envi different environmental monitoring. This is for the uh, engineers to get a better idea of the ground conditions and what they are, and then they'll analyze the material and they will uh, come up with uh, a plan or um, what, what materials will be required. So we're essentially looking at, okay, what is the quality of the soil? Are we going to get good drainage? Drainage is an important part of it. How soft is it? How hard is it? Yeah, so two major layers here. The first one is this kind of sandy or gravel type material. That's likely the fill material. And then beyond that, we get into this softer native material. A lot of, a lot more fines content in here. Silty, yeah, lots of organics as well. We're basically just drilling some shallow test holes to figure out essentially what the road is made out of. So I'm working for Meridian Forest Services out here. Uh, flagging kind of came unexpected. Was doing en engineering first in the forest and kind of field work a lot. And then they just offered me this, kind of took it. So I was like, yeah, might as well. <laughs> Since there will be more like work on this road throughout the next three years, my company kind of wants us to get, be like, get our certification for flagging. So we can kind of like shift between field work and this type of work if we ever need to, you know. But right now, just Edward and I have a few uh, older coworkers I work with in the field more, but uh, just here and there. <laughs> Sorry, okay, go ahead. Yeah. So who are you? Where are we? Uh, I'm Leonard Nookmus. We're at the uh, RST down in Sarita. And we're, uh, I got a bubbler in a bucket and we're gonna go grab some fish out of the trap right now. Yeah, so basically the, the fish come down the river in the current, so they're just, you know, about three and a half to four centimeters. So they don't have a lot of swim capabilities. So they just follow the currents in the evening. So it's actually the trap fishes during the night. That's where we get our fish. So then they come in into this drum and gently rotates them back into the live tank. And actually we've got a bunch of, we've got some fry and we've got some bigger, um, quite a few, hey? Yeah, there's a few fry. Yeah, and then we just, we dip them um, and then bring them up to identify them and count. Well, just to see what's flowing, the Chinook mostly is what we're looking at here too. Oh, I got him. <laughs> Whoa, whoa! There's a hole in the net! No! Okay, well, we need a new net, that's for sure. I started working on the RSC this year, so since it started, I was, uh, it's been pretty good, anyways. I, I, I think this is where I mostly started to learn my identification of the salmon, which I was surprised I, kept, I was able to catch on as soon as I was. A few months now, I think we've been doing this for three, three, four months this year, so I've been liking it, love it. So the purpose is to see what fish were here before, like how many the out migration was. It shows that the, the schnook that are being raised at the Nitnet Hatchery are coming back to spawn in the Sarita. But DFO wants to know how long are they going straight out? Like are they being put in the river up by Blenheim and are they just coming right out? So we'll catch them here and count them. And then the timing of once they hit here, Leonard and Tom and Barry and Trinity do the beach staining in the estuary so then they'll also be looking for them there and documenting them there. We've been doing uh, sane, sane sampling for mostly for fry. Um, we get every other species there is here but uh, our, our focus is on salmon mostly. Uh, so we're beach staining. We're taking samples, length, weight, that kind of good stuff. So they put two breaches in here and it's uh, to enhance the salmon. So I guess what we're basically studying is whether the salmon are using it or not, which they are, by the way. Awesome. Well, <laughs> good, good. well the thing about right now is we, we have a three spine and a, um, a sculpin hatch. So we're gonna find a lot of baby three spines and sculpins. 
right now the the the, the salmon migration is almost over. Well, so turn. we're going to get less salmon now. Oh, I thought it was a salmon. It's the free spine, eh? Oh, yeah. yeah. So for every three sets, we have to um, weigh them and measure them. Uh, about thirty of. Last week we had somewhere around a hundred three spine in one set, eh? Yeah. Definitely an awesome experience, though, to come out here and learn. I learned a lot just coming out here when I started how to identify the fry for first, right? I was pretty surprised I was able to catch on, but I got my sister hired, too. She's 16, so she just got hired on this last month. Yeah. And so hopefully she takes to it and gets keen to learn. And yeah, I definitely think it's a job for something like that, yeah. It's a really good job for as young As long people, as you're willing to learn. It's, it, seems, it seems like they shuffle a little off off to older people. <laughs> It's not like they just plop you out there too, right? I mean, they'll send somebody out here and show you what to do, how to do it properly, and I like it. It's I don't no complaints, no nothing about it. So, just need more people. <laughs> I think four other people work in RST, like you guys were out there yesterday, and there's just uh, Leonard, Tom, me, and Trinity doing the beach thing. And I'd like to say, like on Leonard's behalf and for Trinity, this is a great job for young people. And at, at $24 an hour to start up, the young kids, it's way better than working at Walmart for 14 or at the Dairy Queen for 10 bucks, whatever, you know. And it's a good job. And it's real dif diversified because we don't even just do the beach staining. We do wildlife cameras. We do all kinds of other things with LGL and it's a great job to get people out into the bush and get them reconnected. It, it really is for the youth. If they can get out here and take my job, I'd love it <laughs> because they need to be out here. There's so many other different reasons, <coughs> reasons on why people would want to come out here, right? All, all it is is them having to find it for themselves. No.